night that I took my father into the hospital. He was very incoherent. I'd never seen him like that. Brian Walter will never forget that drive to the ER. He didn't know then it would be the last time he'd see his dad in person. The final moments they'd spend together. He finally said to me at one point, he said, I'm, I'm sorry, Brian, but it's very hard for me to talk right now. I, I don't have the energy. COVID was about to take John Walter's life, but a dose of donor plasma gave him enough energy to say goodbye. We got a, a video chat from my dad. He was so alert and awake and understanding, and he can, continued like that for probably about three or four days. After his father's passing and recovering from the virus himself, Brian donated his plasma. I believe the whole process was two hours long, and your two hours could give another family a few days of ultimately saving someone's life or giving more time to say goodbye, which was in it, what, what happened in our case. Other survivors are doing the same. I know how scary it was being sick. It's really simple and it's painless, um, and it could really help, help save a life. You can turn a negative experience into a positive one. I'll continue to donate because I know that it's the right thing to do and there's no reason not to. No side effects, there's no problems with it. Uh, it's just a simple way to save somebody else's life. The Red Cross says there are not enough COVID-19 plasma donations to go around. You have to just walk in somebody else's shoes. Imagine you on a ventilator, you saying you know goodbye to your family via FaceTime not even be able to hold them and just knowing that if somebody, somebody donated their antibodies, their plasma, it could possibly save your life. For those who were lucky enough to survive, a call to action and for one more act of bravery. That's America strong. You can't do anything more American, uh, more moral than to save a life, right?